So, here, let me take these off. <laughs> oh, geez, that wasn't good planning. So, last video, I got off on a tangent. Oh, isn't that a surprise? <laughs> Friend of mine, giant, six foot five. We called him Big Larry. Well, that's because he wasn't small. Big Larry was shy. I'm shy. People don't realize that. I might, but I am. But Big Larry is really shy. He called me one night. He said, uh, he said, Jim, uh, they have a wrestling bear at the sportsman show. I said, well, that's a novel idea. He said, Jim, I have to wrestle it. I said, why? He said, I don't know, but I have to. I said, well, let me know how it turns out. No, you don't understand. I said, what do you mean? He said, I need you to drive down to Calgary, 45, 50 miles, and uh, I'll buy you supper. I thought, boy, it better be a good supper. And uh, he said, I said, what do you want me to do, brother? He said, I want you to lead me through the crowd and uh, take me over to the desk and figure out what paperwork I have to sign. He said, Jim, I don't know, but I have to do this. I said, well, I'm shy too, but uh, I can walk through a crowd. Even if the crowd doesn't want me to walk through, I can, trust me, I can walk through it. I said, I'll be glad to, met him, whatever. And uh, I think it was the next day. And uh, we had something to eat and we went down to uh, Calgary Stampede Grounds and uh, they had a sportsman show on. And sure enough, uh, he, he he, he followed me through the crowd and I broke trail and, and uh, took him over to the desk. And uh, I told the guy, I said, this big man wants to wrestle the bear. He said, he's big. I said, he is big. I said, he, he turned 40 this year. He said, really? I thought, I turned 40. Sorry. <laughs> but I, I turned 40. Uh, this year, I thought, what a big man can do. Uh, a man with a big heart that's maybe not so tall, definitely not so tall, uh, that I could do. What a stupid thing to think. But I've thought that all my life. So I thought, Big Larry's filling out the paperwork. Uh, I can catch up to him pretty quick. So I, I filled my paperwork out and his wife took my oldest boy, Scott. They sat up in the stands, and my son, he, he, he thought he was gonna get to watch Big Larry, and he did. And uh, before I filled the paperwork out, I said to the Lord, I said, listen, I looked around, there are quite a few medical people there, EMS and whatnot. I said, what are the odds that I could, I could wrestle that bear and not get killed? And I heard that still small, quiet voice that I, I listened to since I was a kid. He said, pretty good. I said, so let's, let's, let's talk about this here. In my mind, I'm just talking to him. I said, uh, so I wrestled the bear and uh, uh, I won't get killed. He said, you won't. I said, uh, get hurt. Yeah, uh, I think you'll be all right. I said, listen, can we be more specific? Oh, he said, you'll be fine. I said, cool. So I filled the thing out and I, I thought, hey, I weigh, uh, oh, I was, I was pretty close to 190. I might have been 195. Boy, I was a powerful uh, cripple. So I lost my elbow in 85 
and uh, um, anyways, it didn't matter. And uh, well, didn't they uh, call me first to wrestle the bear? And I thought, would like to watch someone else do it. But anyways, hey, Lord said I'd be fine. So I climbed up and I got in the ring. Never been in a ring. Oh, judo mat, uh, a skating rink, playing hockey, same thing. And um, the referee told me, uh, I have a picture. His wife took a picture. I don't know how to put it on this stupid thing, but it, 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 it's, it's quite a novel picture and a um, big picture. And uh, I was still standing at the time the bear hadn't beat the crap out of me yet. It's coming. And uh, I did the best that I could. I mean, I really tried. And that bear just reached over. It, it weighed 750 pounds because it had never hibernated. It came from Florida. It didn't have its eye teeth in and it didn't have claws but its pads on its feet were so rough that they'd tear the skin right off your arm. And its molars, they weren't false. And that bear took my foot out from underneath me and I'd been doing martial arts for a long time and I, I was not afraid of much. Anything, really. Jeez, it's called delusional. And uh, that bear put me on my back, and it did not take a lot of effort. It took my knee right out sideways. And with the other paw, it drove my chest right onto the mat. So, a wonderful sweeping action, action like a foot sweep. Uh, move the person's weight over a bit to the left, sweep the foot out from under them, just drive them right on the mat. Well, that's what the big bear did. And then the first thing he did was opened his mouth and went straight for my crotch. I'm not kidding. I put my hand down there as quickly as I could before he could get his mouth where it's, I didn't want it to go. And he put my whole hand, uh, I don't know if you can see this, probably not. He put this much hand in his mouth and bit. Not hard, but it just wanted me to know that it was in absolute authority. And it was. And I took, like, I, I was built pretty heavy back then. I, I'm pretty skinny now. I'm about 164. And, uh, and um, I don't exercise that much, but I, I, I do exercise. And uh, I ripped that hand out of that thing's mouth, and it grabbed my elbow in its mouth, half my bicep, half my forearm, and it was not letting go. And uh, the referee thought, well, I probably wasn't going to jump up and beat the bear. And so he looked at me, I looked at him, and he, he just let me on. And uh, I got up and I nearly fell over on my left leg. I thought, I do believe my father said I'd be all right. I'd be okay. I couldn't put any weight on the, on, on the knee. And I thought, I have to get off to some place where I'm gonna talk with my father. And so, I limped out of the ring and I climbed through the rope and got down Big Larry. Uh, I mean, so another guy from, he had driven all the way from Saskatchewan to the Calgary Stampede in order to wrestle the bear, because he had wrestled the bear a couple of nights before and the bear beat him over in Saskatchewan. He wanted to come for a rematch. So he climbs in with the bear and the first thing he does, he slaps it right across the side of the head. 
two or three times. The referee didn't think much of that. Anyone with a brain wouldn't have thought much of that. And I think he was trying to get the bear's attention. The bear already had given him his, the bear's attention, and so the bear hung a licking on him. And I don't blame the bear. I don't. Not at all. Not for a moment. Meanwhile, I'm trying to stand without falling over on my left knee, which was no longer working. I mean, uh, I, I, I sure I had three surgeries on my right knee, but my, my left knee is always good. He was. And um, Big Larry got in there and I thought, I'm not going to watch this. I'm bored. Last thing I want to see, that giant friend of mine, same age, uh, exactly two and a half times my weight. Like I'm 185, 190, Big Larry, uh, 465, so twice and a bit. And I thought, forget this drivel. I don't think this is that much fun. So I had it off over in a corner where there weren't too many people. I said, Father, uh, in my mind, I don't move my lips so much people think you're talking to yourself. It's kind of like talking to yourself, but it's not. I said, um, uh, want to talk about this? He said, what? I said, um, I'm pretty sure you uh, mentioned that I would be just fine. Oh, he said you will. I said, okay, let's review. Okay? I don't need to tell you how I feel. You know how I feel. You know everything about me. I mean, you know me from my sitting down in the morning to my laying down at night, and if you understand what I just said, he knows everything. Get it? He, he, he told me that one day. I said, do you, do you really know me? He said, I know you from your sitting down in the morning until you're laying down at night and I know everything in between on both sides. Uh, well, fundamentally, there's nothing about you that he doesn't know. That's not necessarily like a really good thing. Well, I guess on the other side of the coin, you have nothing to hide. I said, I hurt. He said, yes. I said, I hurt. He said, yes, you do. I said, what's that about? That's it. I was pretty confident that I could get in there and wrestle that bear and uh, I wouldn't hurt. He said, I didn't tell you that. I said, you'll be all right, he said. He said, I said, you'd be, you'd be all right. I said, when? He said, three days. I said, uh, one more time. He said, you'll be perfectly fine in three days' time, which, incidentally, should be enough time for you to tell everyone why you're limping. I said, you're kidding. He said, no. Imagine, you're not going to have to tell anybody anything. They're going to ask you. I said, 
for the record, uh, I have to ask you questions that are more specific in nature. That's very true. So, next day I went to work uh, in a lady's house in uh, Oles. Uh, I was living in the Ditsburg. I think I'm, I'm not sure if it's, it's very overpass. I think it was. And, um, no, it wasn't. It was old. Who cares? Yeah. I, I went into the lady's house and I was installing my cupboards and all that sort of stuff. I built cupboards, a lot of them. Yeah, they didn't look too bad. And uh, the lady says, uh, can you imagine? They have a wrestling bear at the sportsman show. Is that not the most disgusting thing you ever heard of? She said, I just bet that thing just rakes. It's probably not clean at all. I said, well, I certainly smell clean. And she's kind of ignoring me. Well, she's a woman. She's been married a long time. I, I was not her husband, but it does not matter. When you get set in your ways, uh, you you can tend to ignore um, uh, uh, it, it intellectual input from the average man who is just a little smarter, just a little bit north of Forrest Gump. And nonetheless, that slipped right by her. She said, you know, my daughter is, uh, uh, works for the SPCA. I said, well, that's really good. Uh, she was there last night watching. I said, oh, that's really good. She said, did she take any pictures? Well, she said, none that I've seen yet. I thought, oh, that's really good. And uh, then she said something else, and I said, well, something about the bear. And, well, it was kind of funny. I, I mean, you, you, have to, you have to look for humor. Uh, the bear was right next door to the fish tanks where people would pay for their little kids to catch a fish. And so the bear is here and 22.7 feet over there. The little kids are standing holding wonderful little one pound, pound and a half trout. You, you want to understand um, that bear did not get to be 750 pounds in weight by not being attentive to where the, the meal was being served. <laughs> Anyways, Lord and I had a pleasant talk, and uh, then uh, Big Larry, of course, he pinned the bear. Of course he did. And uh, Big Larry climbs out of the ring and uh, Big Larry is big. And uh, I'm walking beside him. Uh, we're kind of... Oh, by the way, when I went up in the ring, my, 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 my son is about 10 or 11 or I don't know what he was. I'm not sure he probably was older than that. Anyways, he's probably 12 or 14, maybe. And, uh, well, he nearly fell off the seat. Well, he was terribly impressed, even when the bear beat me, because who in their right mind gets in a, a ring with a bear? Well, a short Irish guy, <laughs> which is a dumb thing. Anyways, we were walking through the crowd, and people were coming up, and they were saying, Oh, Big Larry, you beat the bear. And I mean, I was there. Like, I, 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 I was beside Big Larry. He was not covering me in his shadow, okay? I was there. And I thought, it took more guts for me to get in with that bear than it did Big Larry. But coming in second, it doesn't count. So let's see if I can bring this into a spiritual connotation. There's something wrong with the stupid screen. Mm -hmm. Yep, good, got it. 
Here it is. Anything you do, don't do it like as though coming in second doesn't count. Because it doesn't count. So what you do, you do with your whole heart. And you do not do it in the hope that you're going to be second best. You do it in the hope that you're going to be the best that you can be. You do not have to be the best at all, but you have to do it the best that you can do. Get that? I have decided, had decided a long time ago, I mean, eight, nine years old, that I would, maybe five, that I would be the best that I could be. I didn't kid around about it. I really tried. I didn't. I lived my, my life with my father in the same manner. I don't want to be second best in that I don't want to give my father my second best. I've been divorced three times. I could have tried harder. I know it. I'm never going to say that about the next marriage. And I, my father and I, we've been talking. And there is going to be another marriage. And I know the lady's name. Because um, I wanted to ask her out on a date. And I asked my father, I asked him everything. It's important. I said, Father, would you be offended if I were to ask that <clears throat> most beautiful woman if she would consider going on a date with me? He said, no. Oh, he said, listen, I might ask you to ask her something for me first. I said, I'll be glad to. I was walking towards the lady. She, oh, you have no idea how beautiful she is. And um, he said, ask her to marry you. I did not miss a single footstep. I walked right up to that lady. Never in my entire life have I ever met anyone as beautiful. I said, um, would you marry me? I'm not going to tell you what she said. I would never say her name. Never. I will never embarrass someone whom I love as deeply. Don't give God your second best. I will never. My next beautiful woman, I will never give her my second best. My life will be dedicated to my God and to that woman. And that's the way it is. And I will not back off from that. My God knows when I do what I do, that I do it the best I can. There, there, there are no half measures. When I close my eyes in death, I do not want to have one single regret. I want to know that I've done my best.
If you think about that, what part of your life do you wish to give to God? What part of your life can you afford to give to God and still retain leadership in your own life? Not enough. You cannot give enough to God and still remain the leader of your own life. You have to give enough to God that you give him the reins, the control of your life. And then he gives you, empowers you to walk in what he calls you to. But don't ever think for a second, not ever, not for a second. Don't ever think that you're the boss because in God's kingdom, we are his servants. And there's no way that you want to give God anything less than the best. And I won't. I do believe that we covered it. And I am, uh, I'm pleased. I'm not pleased with me. I'm pleased with what God has just done with us. Take your heart, present it to God. Pray, make a difference. I am so glad to be alive. You're gonna live till you die. Only you can determine how you're going to do it. Only you can determine where you're going to spend eternity. The prayer is this, God forgive me. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior in that he took my place on the cross for my sins. I am truly sorry, Father, for having lived the way I did, I have. Help me to live the way you want me to. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So you are going to live until you die. If you don't learn to trust God, to listen, to study scripture, to study God, to pray, to talk, study history, see what God has done, you're gonna get off the trail. And if you get off the trail as I did, as I have, repent, ask God to forgive you. Uh, do this. Forget your own significance. No one ever has to come to me and tell me about a problem. And I, I start from a, a, a defensive standpoint? No. Somebody says there's a problem, and you might be it. I study me not in a self-defense mode, but I want to know if I have screwed up. And if I have, I'll repent. I have to, I want to. I got burn on my supper. Um, where I'm smelling it anyways. Don't children say the strangest things? Yes, they do. You do something about that, eh? You care. Fourth picture. A woman who has been abused and growing through, trying diligently to find a way to survive within her own heart, soul, spirit, mind. 
protecting, protecting that little, little girl that lives within her body, within her mind, her heart and soul and spirit. That lady sitting on the floor in the corner. No one's in the room, just her. And she can do this in a in a room that's crowded. I'll tell you how. I'll tell you how I've seen it. Her forearms folded across her knees her forehead resting on her, on her forearms, her beautiful black raven black hair hanging down and tears, and tears. And here's how that self-same woman can do the same thing in a crowded room. She just doesn't sit in the corner but those tears are just as real. The pain, the hurt, the agony is just as real. It's just that the tears are on the inside. And she tries to stir up bravado to be that tough one. Well, that's her job. She's protecting the little one within. So, you choose. You choose. Will you reach out and touch someone's heart? Will you, will you care? Will you make a difference? Will you do everything you can to touch a heart so that that heart will seek God? And I, I believe in you. I don't know you. I believe in you. I believe in my Father. I believe that He will work the work within your heart that will bring you in a refined state to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ and into eternity. God bless you. God bless you.